I'm glad burdens are lifted at Calvary. If you got a burden tonight, let me just say you can get it lifted. Amen. Amen. We got the cross over here. If you got a burden that's bothering you, something that's bothering you, just nail it to the cross. We got a box of nails and a 16 ounce hammer over there. Just be sure you hit the right nail. Because if you hit the wrong nail, you better say praise the Lord in the house of God. Amen. <laughs> But you can get your burdens lifted. I'm thankful for the burden bearer. No need of us carrying them when he said he'd do it for us. He said, cast them and lay them upon him. It's good to see you tonight. Good to be in the Lord's house. Good to have Brother John and his family with us tonight. Looking forward to Brother John preaching for us. And they'll be singing for us. And we've got a few other specials tonight. So we're just expecting to have a good time. Uh, a couple of prayer requests we'd like to mention. We won't, normally on Wednesday night we take prayer requests. But we won't tonight because of the sake of time. But uh, Sister Linda's mother went home from the hospital today, but the reason they sent her home is because the cancer she has is spread to her liver, and they sent her home and they turned her over to hospice. So pray for Sister Linda's mother and pray for Sister Linda. She's having a pretty rough time about that. So keep her in your prayers. And then, of course, uh, all our other folks that's been so sick, Brother Wolf and Sam and uh, Brother Clarence, Brother Jesse still having problems. Keep him in your prayers. And, uh, there's so many people need our prayers. Pray for Wayne. He needs our prayers bad. And, uh, Amen. David's dad came home. Good. Didn't know he was in there, Brother David. would have went up and seen him. Let us know next time. Oh, okay. Well, I don't feel too bad then. <laughs> but we'll be praying for him. And then continue to pray for Teresa Hallbrook's dad. I hadn't heard from Heard since he went home from the hospital yesterday, but keep him in his prayer. Let's stand and go to the Lord in a word of prayer. And Sister Henrietta, her mother too, uh, her and Matt have gone up to West Virginia. They got there okay, Brother uh, Bill said they got there about 5 o'clock this evening. So thank the Lord for giving them a safe trip up there and pray for them while they're there and pray for her mother. And when they head back this way, pray God will just give them a safe uh, return. Let's ask the Lord, uh, Brother John. Amen. Amen. Thank God. He still answers prayer. Amen. God's still on the throne. Amen. I heard that song Sunday night over Brother Jeremy. Their choir sang that. We need to get that, Brother Rick. He's still on the throne. Glory to God. He's still in control, too, by the way. So I thank the Lord for that. So praise the Lord. But our president today said he is for same-sex marriages. Just goes to show you how wicked. Wicked. I tell you what, folks, if it wasn't for the remnant, Amen. the judgment of God would be on this place Amen. tonight. Well, I'm glad I'm in. Amen. Amen. <laughs> hey, thank God. I'm glad I'm one of them. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Bless his holy night. <laughs> Amen. Uh, Cassie. You say it was Gene Wheeler? All right, let's remember that request. A lot of folk need our prayers. Pray. I all right, okay. God knows the need. I got a special burden on my heart tonight. I appreciate you praying for it. God knows all about it. And I know there's probably a lot of us have uh, unspoken. Anybody have unspoken requests? Just by the raise of hand. God knows our hearts, and he knows what to do. So let's ask God's will to be done and bless us tonight, meet the needs, and answer these requests according to his perfect will. Amen. I still believe he's, uh, he's going to answer prayer. Amen. Amen. Nathaniel, would you pray for us, please? Yes. Yes. Thank you, our Father. Amen. Yes. Yes. Grant it, Jesus. Yes. 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 Amen. Grant it, our Father. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yes.
Right, yes. Great at our Father. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. Thank you. Make stand, please. Amen. It's good to be in the house of the Lord tonight, isn't it? Amen. Are you ready to hear the word preached? Yes, let's go. Amen. Kicker and give. I pray God, he, God get all over him. He preached like a hound dog. Amen. I chased a rat. Amen. 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 I tell you right now, it is good to be in the house of the Lord. God's been good to us and been good to his people. We're here. And if you're visiting tonight, thank you for coming. But I just pray you just go ahead and relax, enjoy yourself, shout, praise the Lord, just give him the glory because of the victory we have in Jesus. Amen. Page 116, we'll sing the first and last stanza of victory in Jesus. First and last stanza. Sing out if you believe it now. I heard an old, old story How a Savior came from glory How He gave His life on Calvary To save a wretch like me I heard about Him on Him Of His precious blood upon Him Then I repented of my sins And won the victory Sing it out, church. Oh, victory in Jesus, my Savior, forever. He sought me and he bought me with his redeeming blood. He loved me ere I knew him, and all my love is due him. He plunged me. Let everybody know on this third stanza now. I heard about a mansion he has built for me in glory. And I heard about the streets of gold beyond the crystal sea. About the angels singing and the whole redemption story. song of victory, oh victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. He sought me and he bought me with his redeeming blood. He loved me ere I knew him, and all my love is knew him. He plunged me. See, we're used to habit, aren't we? We're used to habit. Now, you sound like to me, you just mm, getting this little bit wound up. So what we're going to do is we're going to get an introduction over here. And I want you to sing that last stanza again. Now, most of you folks are as old as I am. I'm in my mid-50s and up. So you've probably been saved a good while. You've sung this all your life. Now, are you ready to really sing it for Him? You believe that you've got victory. He says, therefore, my beloved, be ye steadfast, unmovable. Always abounding in what? Circumstances? No. In the work of the Lord, that your labor is not in vain in Christ Jesus. Brother Edward, I want you to tickle in my every song with your toes, whatever you got to do. But bless God, let's sing. Amen? Let her rip. Last stand. Hey, you shout right here. All right, here we go. I heard about a mansion he has built for me in glory. And I heard about the streets of gold beyond the crystal sea. Sing it out, 
answers. Oh, victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. He sought me, hallelujah, with His redeeming blood. He loved me and I knew Him, and all my love is due Him. He plunged me to victory beneath the cleansing flood. Amen. Amen. Thank you. You may be seated. Thank you, Brother Rick. I appreciate that enthusiasm. We've got a lot that we need to be excited about. Amen? When you think about the victory that we have in the Lord Jesus Christ and the, and the assurance that we have that he's given us through his word, we've got reason and cause to be excited. But if you come in tonight and it smells it smell like Boots and Sundays, <laughs> it's a good reason. Brother uh, David Pugh has been making chili all day today. He made about 13 gallons. And uh, we're going to use that uh, Saturday in our prayer garden dedication. So Brother David's worked hard today, and I appreciate that. And uh, you uh, started just give, before you leave tonight, y'all just thank him for working so hard. And we've got a lot of hard work ahead of us. And um, so Saturday, we're going to need all the help we can get. And uh, so all of you come out. That's talking about young, old, middle-aged, over the hill, under the hill, want to get up the hill, and all in folk. Amen. We can use all the help we can get. Looking forward to it. Amen. All right, Brother John, how about you and your family come and sing for us, and then you'll have a little break before you come and preach for us. And I love Brother John. I love his family. They're a blessing to us. Brother uh, Buddy fixed some southwestern chicken stew tonight and fed them. I think he sort of pepped them up with a little spicy stuff. So they're ready to go, all except Nathaniel. Nathaniel <laughs> ate a sandwich because he's allergic to milk. So glad we found that out about before we eat it, amen? <laughs> amen. So you pray for him tonight. I appreciate this family. God bless you all. I tell you, when you're allergic to something, you ought to ask, amen? And uh, well, I said that for this reason. You know, there's some things in this journey we're allergic to, but we seem to partake of it anyway, preacher. And uh, it, brings, it brings great misery to the heart and the life of a Christian. So uh, I'm glad, just glad to be saved, and I'm glad he's my salvation. My rock, my shield, my Jesus, he's, he's a real, I can feel him deep within my soul. One day, save my soul, and he made me, he made me whole, my Lord, he's real, I can feel him in my soul. One night, I repented, I fell down on the bended knee, I cried, Lord, have mercy, I want you to save my soul from sin, now, Lord, I'm not alone, I'm headed, I'm headed home, my Lord, He's real, I can feel Him in my soul. So come to Jesus, I repent, I get your feet on the solid rock, he's the one, he'll help you, he'll hear you when you cry, it's Jesus, our Savior, he's a faithful friend and guide, well, my Lord, he's real, he'll lead you to the other side, oh, my rock, oh, my shield, oh, my Jesus, he's He's a real, I can feel, I can feel deep, deep within, deep within my, my soul. One day, day save my, my soul, and He made and me, He, he made, made me whole, my Lord. My Lord he's, real. he's real, I can feel Him in my soul. You know, I, we're not saved by feeling, but... Isn't it wonderful? We can feel Him. Amen. I, I'm glad sometimes them old bumps get to going up and down my back and down my arms. Some people call them glory bumps. I just say, man, it's the Holy Ghost to God moving around. Amen. And like I said, not saved by feelings, but ever since I got saved, I can feel Him. Amen. And uh, I'm grateful, so grateful for that. We're trying to get rearranged here. This is a song that uh, John Carl wrote a little while back, and I appreciate the, the talents the Lord gives us. 
You know, somebody, you pro somebody's probably sitting here preaching and they're saying, God didn't give me any talents. I, I beg your pardon. God give us all talents. Uh, and what we need to do is find those talents and use them for His glory. And uh, I'll tell you what, if you use them for His glory, He'll magnify it. He'll magnify it. And so uh, this song is entitled In Troubled Times. In troubled times, I need a friend. Someone to lean on, on who I can depend. In troubled times, through good and bad, I need someone to hold my hand. His name is Jesus. He my friend, the one I lean on, on who I depend. In troubled times, through good and bad, he's the one who holds my hand. When skies are blue. I still need him Cause without him There is nothing I can do For he's my strength From day to day So I thank the Lord And I praise his name His name is Jesus He's my friend, the one I lean on, on who I depend. In troubled times, through good and bad, He's the one who holds. I am safe and I'm secure for he died and shed his blood to save my soul now I am free I've been redeemed the Lord has been so good to name is Jesus. He's my friend, the one I lean on, on who I depend. In troubled times, through good and bad,
troubled times I need a friend Someone to lean on On who I can depend Troubled times Good and bad I need someone To hold my hand His name is Jesus He's my friend The one I lean on On who I depend In troubled times Good and bad, he's the one who holds my hand. When skies are blue, I still need him, cause without him there is nothing I can do, for he's my strength. Day to day, so I thank the Lord and I praise His name. His name is Jesus, He's my friend, the one I lean on, on who I depend in troubled times. died and shed his blood to save my soul now I am free I've been redeemed the Lord has been so good to me his name is Jesus he's my free among us all that he does all of his mercy and all of his love the pen of a writer could write every day even this world could never contain 
how I've been blessed. Warmth in the winter, flowers in spring, laughter in summer, the changing of leaves, food on my table, a good that can talk hands that can touch and legs that can walk ears that can listen and eyes that can see oh I've got to praise him as long as I breathe cause I have been blessed it Father and mother, it nurtured and raised my sisters and brothers, and the memories made our pastor to lead us, his altar to pray, stripes that can heal and Lord, blood that can save. She's the greatest on earth Our flag stands for freedom And what it's worth She stands in the harbor Miss Liberty calls All have gave some But some have gave all For me to be blessed Shoulder to lean on when I am down. The rock where he leads me when I'm overwhelmed. The place where he hides me. It's under Woo, the devil can't find me. Hallelujah! I'm in Jesus. Yeah. Oh. 
just something about that just thrills my soul. I need to do a test on this lapel mic. Brother Ken thinks he tore it up last night. If he does, we're going to send him a bill. If we knew that last night, we took it out of his love offering. <laughs> Boo-boo. One, two, one, one. It worked. Better be glad that, Brother Ken, you know us. I enjoyed the message last night, Brother Ken had. Good message, good application. What a joy that is. Amen. We have some other songs, other specials tonight. Brother Ken, uh, brother Ken he's on my mind now. Brother Rick's going to come and introduce us. Boy, that was good, wasn't it? Amen. Amen. Uh, brother Buddy's going to come and sing first. Then after he sings, Sister Toots, you will sing. Come up after him and Sister Beth after Miss Toots, okay? I do have one announcement to make to all choir members. Brother Kevin has some CDs back there, some of the songs that we have been practicing. And please pick those up from him tonight to where you can listen to them and get a jump start on those songs. Uh, if there's two members in the same household that uh, are in the choir, just pick up one, okay? And if anyone is left out tonight, let Brother Kevin know, and we'll make some more CDs, okay? Well, we need to really uh, get on this and get ready, okay? Brother Buddy, you come on and sing for us. Before we play this, uh, sing this. This has been a very <laughs> spiritually emotional roller coaster of a week. Only a good thing, some of the uh, some of the private messages I received at the prayer garden that never get shared because of the private nature. I feel so underqualified when pastors are coming to me. Uh, but one I shared this past Monday at the fellowship meeting. Um, a few weeks ago, this pastor's wife almost took her life. Everything seemed to be going fine in this family. You know, uh, that pastor and his sons were out visiting people that night. And I would praise God that I was on the internet when I was on that night. And when I realized there was a real problem, I got on 911 and had them patch me through to the authorities in that particular state. And long story short, she ended up having a brain tumor. That's what had caused that chemical imbalance. You know, but that past, the message I got Sunday night, that pastor telling me that he couldn't thank me and our church enough that our outreach reached out to his wife because it would have killed him and his sons to come back from visiting people and found his wife a victim of something like that. So this has been one of the difficult things about serving in this role is that I think I run every emotional gamut. I can get frustrated with the atheists that make me mad. I can laugh at some of the comments. I can, I can be challenged spiritually. And then sometimes I just weep with those that share things with me. And I'm very glad that... Uh, I was able to be there and allow the authorities to patch through our account and reach this woman in that state. Uh, and they believe that this tumor was found in time and will be treated, so that's a, even a greater blessing. But I'm glad that there was someone that came to me uh, nearly seven months ago when my life was dark. <laughs> Whew. <laughs> when I when everything I believed in <laughs> proved false and nothing seemed like it was worth living anymore he came to me hallelujah 
You're going to have to play the chorus before I sing. And they've been singing that song before that. It can help any of you. That song makes me proud of you. Praise God. All of us have a different story how we came to Calvary. But we didn't come to Calvary. He came to us first. And praise God whether you were blessed to grow up in a Christ-filled Christian home or you were a drunk or a cultist like Robert and I. He came to us before we came to him.
I was going to sing the shepherd's point of view tonight, but I came ho- off and left my music at the house. See, that's the way the devil works. But he's not getting his way. The Lord's laid it on my heart to sing, I just want to thank you, Lord. just want to thank you, Lord, for every time you heard me pray. I just want to thank you for always being there. When I was the dad just want to thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. If I had a thousand lives to live, I'd give them all to my Lord. He's been so good. given peace I could afford. He's made the good times I've numbered the bad. Been the best friend I've ever had. I just want to thank you Lord. Thank you Lord. I just want to thank you, Lord, for every time you heard me pray. I just want to thank you for always being there. When I was a dad. just want to thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I just want to thank you, Lord, for every time you heard me when I pray. And I just want to thank you for always being there. There's been times when I was so down and out but you were always close beside me. Yes, and there has been times, Lord, that you were the only friend that I had. I know we forget in our busy lives to just stop and say, thank you. So right now, Lord, I just wanted to take that time and say, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I just want to thank you, Lord, for every time you've heard me pray. I just want to thank you for always being there. just want to thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord.
dark outside, it can be all so dark in the middle of the night. Neither is God. What a great God. Praise up in jail, have no future, no story to tell, I know my soul would be crying for help, if not for grace. go wrong by thanking him and praising him and singing about his grace. 
and even when things may happen with the equipment, I'm glad the Lord's not mechanical. Amen. Amen. I've enjoyed it thus far. I really have. Um, we're not going to take an offering tonight, men. That's it. Brother John preaches for nothing. He gets to feed those boys for nothing. He gets his power bill free. Don't have to make no house payments or rent. <laughs> We're going to take care of the man of God. Brother John and his family has been a blessing to me for a number of years. I'm thankful and glad to the day that our paths crossed, Brother John. And you've blessed us and you've helped us by being a part of our services. Appreciate Nathaniel, the young man is preached for us. His son preached for us at the fellowship meeting on Monday. Done a good job. Preached on the Blood, the book, and the blessed hope. <laughs> Can't go wrong there. Brother John, you come on and share with us tonight what the Lord's laid upon your heart. Hey, it's a blessing to have you. That's already on, brother. You just put her in gear. All right. This is fresh water. Thank you, brother. Fresh water. All right. <laughs> That's right Amen. That's an angel Godfrey. Amen. Thank you, sister. Amen. So, I invite you to turn with me tonight. We'll be in the book of Judges. Judges uh, chapter number 6. As you turn there, I was reminded, Brother Rick, I believe it was, it said, uh, talked about uh, sort of getting in a rut around the church house. And we can do that. I think it was um, uh, one of the preachers made the statement um, that... Uh, a rut's nothing but the grave with both ends kicked out. <laughs> and uh, so uh, we, we're, we're grateful again to the Lord for his good help. Judges chapter number 6. I'll let you uh, stand with me tonight. We'll read the Word of God and give you a moment to rest and uh, remind you and refocus our hearts upon God and his Word. Chapter number 6, and we'll begin a reading verse number 1. It says, And the children of Israel did evil in the sight of the Lord, and the Lord delivered them into the hand of Midian seven years. And the hand of Midian prevailed against Israel, and because of the Midianites, the children of Israel made them dens which are in the mountains, and caves and strongholds. And so it was when Israel had sown that the Midianites came up, and the Amalekites and the children of the east, uh, even they came up against them, and they encamped against them, and they destroyed the increase of the earth, till thou come unto Gaza, and left no sustenance for Israel, neither sheep, nor ox, nor ass. For they came up with their cattle, with their tents, and they came as grasshoppers from multitude, for both they and their camels were without number. And they entered into the land to destroy it. I, I think that's, a, that's an issue there without number. Right. Remember, the Midianites come in great power and great strength. And Israel was greatly impoverished because of the Midianites. And the children of Israel cried unto the Lord. And it came to pass when the children of Israel cried unto the Lord because of the Midianites that the Lord sent a prophet unto the children of Israel which said unto them, Thus saith the Lord God of Israel, I brought you up from Egypt and brought you forth out of the house of bondage. And I delivered you out of the hand of the Egyptians and out of the hand of all that oppress you and drave them out from before you and gave you their land. And I said unto you, I am the Lord your God. Fear not the gods of the Amorites in whose land you dwell, but you have not obeyed my voice. Let's pause just a moment as we pray. Father, we are grateful and thankful for your word. And Lord, help us tonight to hearken unto your voice. May we hear again, thus saith the Lord God. Oh, Father, how we are reminded uh, of the sin of Israel. And Lord, as we look about today, we are reminded of the sins of America. Help us, oh God, as a people, your people, called by your name, would confess our sins and call out and cry out to you, Lord, that you may bring healing to our land. Oh, God, tonight, move upon your people. Thank you for what our hearts have felt. Oh, touch us afresh, Lord, and help us tonight. 
We'd ask in Jesus' name and amen. And you may be seated. I, I, have, um, I have many friends that uh, have preached God's Word. And I, I recently was in a meeting and a, a preacher that we hadn't met uh, made this statement. And he accredited this statement to Brother Kenneth Ridings. He made this statement, if we can live without revival, we will. You listen again. If we can live without revival, we will. It's important that we understand our church is desperate for revival. Yet, in our own hearts, often we think it's another person that stands in need of a move of God. That becomes evident to me when we see the lack of the move of the Spirit in the heart of God's people. I believe this. We ought to all get on our face before God and cry out. We're living in desperate days and desperate hours, and yet we, we play church so often. And, and it's important that we understand that. Even as we, we began, I, I got to thinking about some things this, even this day, and I spent a little time, and, and oh, this is, a, this is one of those um, messages really about Gideon uh, that never ends, preacher. You could preach, you could preach for, you could preach for months on Gideon. And I'm not going to do that. I, I, I'm really not going to do that. I, I've just got a few things I want to share with you. I, and as I begin to think, Paul made this statement to those at Corinth. He said, when I was a child, I spake as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. He said, um, but when I became a man, I put away childish things. It is a day to put away childish things. We, we, we play. We, we piddle. I, I remember hearing... About, I believe it's Brother Larry Winkler, surrendered to preach at a very young age. And I don't know if this is a true statement or not, but somebody said uh, that he was outside playing with his toy trucks and he got a call to come preach the gospel. I'll tell you what, uh, that means we have to separate. That doesn't mean we can't have fun, preacher. That doesn't mean that we can't enjoy life. By the way, we ought to enjoy the things of God. Man, He's He's give us life. He's give it to us abundant upon this earth and eternal in the days to come. But, but these are serious days. Uh, these are times that God has called us to occupy until He comes. And, uh, and Brother Ray Robinson made this statement, and, and, and I believe applicably well. He said that it was on our watch, our watch, that all things have come to pass as they are today. And, and he apologized. And I, I believe, church, we need to apologize ourselves for something. And, and here, uh, Gideon is up. Uh, uh, let's get this picture now. Uh, Judges of the book, uh, that is a transitional book. Uh, uh, Joshua has, uh, has died, and, and uh, uh, soon Samuel uh, will come along, and God will ordain a king. The first king will be Saul. We know that. And this is the book that transitions uh, from, a judge, or from Joshua uh, going into the land of promise. Hey, isn't it wonderful that they were able to make it into the land? Hey, that's a wonderful truth. Uh, but the truth is this. Uh, they, they've come short. They've missed the mark. Uh, matter of fact, it tells us that, that uh, it says that they did, uh, that every man did that which was right in his own sight. That's what this book is about. Of uh, men who failed and continually failed. Listen, they, they took upon them idols. They took upon them the desires of the world. And, and, uh, and I believe this. Our churches have become worldly. Our churches have allowed the world to, to uh, so infiltrate us uh, that we've lost our power with God. I'd like to say I come to make you feel good tonight. But really, God has sent me here to preach, thus saith the Lord God. And I say this, preaching does not always make us feel good. Preaching brings to us change. Preaching brings to us challenge. Preaching brings to us the understanding of that God's holy and that we're simply sinners. We'll come short. We'll miss the mark. Listen, you, you better not put your faith in man. Man will fail you. But let us put our faith in God who never fails. Aren't you glad tonight Jesus never fails? He'll never leave us. He'll never turn from us. I've had some people I call my friends, but they turn from me. Matter of fact, some of them turned on me. These are desperate times. And, 
And uh, as we move, many of these judges and and, uh, and and listen, there's tremendous preaching in this book of these many judges and and Gideon uh, is a uh, is the judge that God will choose to use as the Midianites come in. And, and here's sort of my thought tonight: it is a uh, hearken uh, to his voice. He is dealing with this thought of the depravity of man. All have sinned. You get to thinking you're better than somebody else, my friend. I should have reminded you, you're just a sinner saved by the grace of God. We've all missed the mark. We've all come short. We'll all be on our faces thanking God for salvation. Truth is, we'll all be in hell tonight. But thank God for His grace, sisters. Amen. Thank God for the grace of God that while we were sinners, Christ died for us. I'm glad that while He's on the cross, we're on His mind. He knew who He's dying for. You say, who is He dying for? Whosoever believe in Him. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord. I'm glad it's a whosoever kind of gospel. Amen. And if it's up for just rich people, I'd have never made it. If it had been for smart people, I'd have never made it. If it had been for good looking people, I'm going to stop right there. <laughs> At least my mama said I was good looking. <laughs> I'm saying to you, these are, these are desperate, challenging times. And Gideon finds himself in a, in a, a place of, um, of confrontation. And let me say this, when we serve God, it will be a place of confrontation. The devil hates us. The devil hates this church. The devil hates the Lord. I'll tell you what, if they hated him, I want to assure you, he'll hate you. Well, there's been some great preaching here this week. I've got an opportunity to hear a good bit of it. I've enjoyed it. I'm glad it's going out on the line. We listened to some of it today. Had a good time in the Lord. Hey, here's some truths that he begins to reveal in this ideal of hearkening to the voice. Uh, first of all, let's look at their sin. It says in the children of Israel, did evil in the sight of the Lord. And the Lord delivered them into the hands of Midian seven years. Brother Caldwell preached on Monday night of uh, uh, simply this thought that, that God will allow things to happen on ourselves that we cause ourselves of that he will not bring upon us. Church, I believe that. I believe we have brought upon us of the curses of God. The plagues of God. They did they did what was evil in the sight of the Lord. What were they doing? They, they had groves, preacher. They were worshiping idols of the Midianites and the Amalekites. Their desire was uh, to go after the gods of this world. We're going after the gods of this world. So I don't have any gods in this world. What about that television box that sits in your house? I'll tell you, you, it'll draw, a television can draw two hours out of you just like that. You'll say, man, we, I wish that preacher would hurry up and let us out. I got to get home and watch my program. I pastored in a place, and this lady told me on Sunday night that a show she watched faithful. She said, if you're not through by then, if I leave, you'll know where I'm going. Wow. At least she is honest. <laughs> I'll tell you what, God can't do anything with you till you get honest. If you don't like the preacher, you ought to tell him. They ain't bold enough to tell you to your face, are they, preacher? But they might have you over for supper one day. You'll get that in a minute, amen. <laughs> hey, there's sin. I, 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 listen, this, this issue, this idea of sin. Man, sin will, it's been said, sin will. Let's see how it goes. Sin will take you further than you want to go, keep you longer than you want to stay, and will cost you more than you want to pay. Sin's costly. I'll tell you what, the meter's running, and it'll rack up in a hurry. 
And you will be responsible. Hey, listen to what uh, the writer of Proverbs said uh, concerning uh, this issue of sin. Uh, These are verses you're familiar with. Uh, You've read on occasion. He said, there's these six things that the Lord hate. Yea, seven are an abomination unto him. This is Proverbs 6, 16, 17, 18, and 19. He says a proud look. Pride. He said a lying tongue. He said hands that shed innocent blood. And I want to say this. Our nation is guilty. And if we don't believe God's going to hold this nation responsible, judgment is coming. Abortion's a real issue. We don't hear much about it now. I I think maybe because we believe there's other issues more important. But the life of the unborn is very important. He says in heart, that uh, devises wicked imagination, feet that are swift in running to mischief. I, I, am I not describing America? And the truth is, am I not sitting down on your pew just a little bit? He said, A false witness that speaketh lies, and he that soweth discord among the brethren. Again, every man did that which was right in his own eyes. That's where we're at today. And let me say, if we really want revival, if we really desire revival, we won't say this message is for somebody else. We'll say, oh Lord, it's me standing in need. Oh God, I'm the one keeping revival from coming. Brother Caldwell said, if you want revival, you can have it. Then why are we seeing so little revival? I think I answered that question. Let me answer it this way. Brother Riding said, if we can live without revival, we will. It's going pretty good, isn't it? Got me a new car. <laughs> Preacher said the other night he was spending all his, what do you say, cigarette and, and beer money for gasoline, but that's all right too. <laughs> Man, he blessed my heart. He helped me. I'll tell you what, he helped me. Their sin, but not only did he deal as God deals with their sin. Listen, you're going to have to deal with your sin. Be sure of this, your sin will find you out. Their struggles. Their struggles. It says, and the hand of Midian prevailed against Israel. Everywhere they turned, the enemy was winning. You ever feel like you're just on the losing side? You ever felt like everything you touch breaks? Honestly, I I used to think I could fix a few things. But I've come to find out I can't fix anything. Median is prevailing. The enemy's winning. And there's a reason that Median is winning. Because the people of God... Has, have lost their zeal and their fire and their desire for righteousness. If it feels good, it must be right. I said earlier, man, I'm glad I can feel God. I'm glad I can feel Him, but I'm not saved by feelings. It's by faith. But the truth is, we walk by feeling so often. We walk by sight. If it doesn't look right to us, it must not be a God. I'll tell you what, God was Job an upright man. 
Didn't it say he skewed evil? Can you believe God would be in sickness? You believe God could be in suffering? You believe God could be in sorrows? You ought to nod your head just like this. I'll tell you what, God will use those things to draw us unto Himself. That's what's going to happen here. Here's some real struggles. Man, Midian seems to, Midian is winning. And, and because of the Midianites, the children of Israel made them dens in which uh, are in the mountains and caves and, and strongholds. They've dug out places to live. They're hiding. I'm afraid the church often goes into hiding. Have you ever been intimidated by the world? You ought to just do your head like that. Well, they seem stronger than us, don't they? So, sometimes It's been like this. There's been times when, when it seemed like there was 20 of the enemy and only one of me. Does that mean I'm losing? The only reason I lose is because I choose to. I hide in the dens. I hide in the caves. I find me a stronghold. I I back up into a place. Hey, I'll tell you, sometimes the world backs us into corners. And the truth, sometimes we paint ourselves in them. It sounds it sounds funny, doesn't it? You know, we see this on, um, I don't know, I hadn't seen it in a long time, but you used to see on TV shows, you know, sit funny things and then paint, be painting before you know what they painted themselves into a corner. Sounds funny. But the truth is we often paint ourselves into corners. That's exactly what the children of Israel have done. They've allowed Midian. By the way, Midian's strong. They've come in like grasshoppers. We read that. It said that they came by the multitudes on their camels. By the way, in the Bible, camel is a type of grace. And if you don't believe this, God will use our enemies when we fail Him to bring judgment upon us. You say, that doesn't sound like the God I know. Well, you don't know Him very well then. He's not the God of health, wealth, and prosperity. He's the God of holiness and righteousness and and godliness. He didn't send us here to be prosperous. He sent us here to be faithful. He's brought us here to occupy. He's brought us here to proclaim the saith God. I tell you, after they whooped me the first time, if I'd have been Paul, I'd have probably quit. I'd have said something like this, you're not going to whip me anymore. But instead, Paul said, I count it all joy. (laughs) Man, they left there singing. Now you figure that one out. It is this, we are candidates. God has called us. We are a people set apart. Not for what I desire, but what God chooses to do for me, through me, and to me. Is God wrong to allow cancer to take over your body? Absolutely not. He may choose to heal that cancer. You say, I don't know about that. I do. (laughs) He's a great physician. But he's going to do what will bring glory and honor to him. Not glory and honor to you. We'll just stop right here and say it's all about him. And these are struggling with the issues. 
Why would God allow this to happen to us? Listen, you've done it to yourself. You've done what was evil in the sight of the Lord. See, there's some that chose tonight. Stay at home. I'll tell you that recliner, recliner looks a whole lot better than a hard church pew. Does, doesn't it? Just go ahead and say amen. But I want to tell you this, that TV message is not going to get you anywhere. But you'll come to the house of God and sit on a hard pew and God will do something for you. He'll revive your spirit. He'll restore your soul. Hey, He'll reveal joy, fresh joy in your life. I like joy. And no, my wife's name's not joy. I'm talking about real joy. These are struggling. Where you at in your, your, your journey? What's going on in your life? What's God putting His finger on? Oh, God's got a big finger. Not only struggles, but these situations... These situations, I, I looked up some things about strongholds, but I'm, I'm going to press on. We know this, that, that God's uh, desire is that we overtake these strongholds, that we, we overwhelm our enemy. I took my little fella fishing the other day, and I said, this is the way fish operate. This, listen, listen to this. Now, see if this sounds for me. This is the way fish, I don't know a lot about fish, but I know this about fish. They hide in the... They hide in the bushes. Uh, they hide in, in these places of cover. And when that unexpected little fish swims by, they ambush them. That, that's what, that's what a, a predator fish does. They ambush. Look, some of you are looking at me like you think I'm talking about fishing. That's not what I'm talking about at all. I'm talking about we have a predator. And he's lurking in the shadows. And he, he won't... Hey, listen, when we go swimming by, he wants to jump out and eat us. It's real. I'm going to tell you, the devil is alive and well. But God sent me here to report to you, his days are numbered. (laughs) He's still a predator, though. Not not only, listen, in these situations do we, we we see some issues. Here in verse number three, he says, And it was so when Israel had sown. This may be a dangerous question. And I'm going to ask you to respond to me. How many of you planted some, some similitude of a garden this year? You, you've got a few preachers. Not too, many, not too many farmers here. But a few gardeners. Yeah, we, we really changed. America's really changed, had I was listening to some years ago and they... The, the news media was stopping and asking people, and they said, where does milk come from? Not one person said a cow. A half a dozen people said the grocery store. You know why they said that? That's where our milk comes from. I'm not even going to ask how many milk cow this morning. Your milk came from the grocery store. Well, Israel is sowing. If they don't sow, they don't eat. Now you think I'm talking about farming. You see, what you sow, you're going to reap. If you sow the flesh, you're going to reap a whirlwind. Hey, there's some people out sowing, amen, sowing to the flesh. 
They say it like this. They say, I'm going to sow my wild oats while I'm able. You better sow the Spirit. You better lay up treasures in heaven where thieves cannot steal, where moths cannot eat. Hey, where the waters cannot corrupt. You leave something sitting out a little while and you go back to get it. It'll be rusted. That's just what happens. It's called corrosion. This is a corrosive society. Hey, the arse, this is a corrosive world in which we live in. Not so, a world in which we live in. My body just don't feel like it used to, preacher. I, I'm going I'm to tell you something. Last night I couldn't even get to sleep. This knee and this hip were just a hurting so bad. Got about four or five shaking their head like this. <laughs> they couldn't either. <laughs> this, this, hey, this, this, this thing, man, we headed somewhere. It's called the grave. It's appointed unto man once to die. And the truth is, I don't want to live here forever. I'm ready to see him. I'm getting ready for a new body. Say amen. Oh, oh they've got some, hey, some struggles. They're sowing. They're so but but it's 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 not prospering anything. If you would let me, they're sowing to the flesh. It's all about their own needs. Not only sowing, but sustenance. And it says in verse number 4, And they encamped against them and destroyed the increase of the earth. Who did the Midianites? They've come in. Listen, they're taking what's been sown. As a matter of fact, we won't get anywhere close to this, but Gideon's behind the wine press, and he's reaped a little bit of, of a grain barley that he sowed, and, uh, and he's threshing it behind the wine press. He's hiding, threshing this, uh, this grain. And the Lord comes to him and he said, Hail there, thou mighty man of valor. This is sort of how Gideon says it. Me? Who's he talking to? If you don't believe I'm telling you the truth, Gideon's going to put out a fleece. And he said, Lord, I just don't believe you're talking to me. And if you're really talking to me, I'm going to lay this fleece out. And in the morning, let this fleece be wet and let the ground be dry. In the morning it was. Gideon said, don't be hot at me, Lord. I'm still having trouble with this. You talking to me? Lord, if you are, let the fleece be dry in the morning and let the ground be wet. And it was. And God did some things. For Gideon, listen to this. God did some things for Gideon in the night. Amen. I'll tell you what, in the night time, God will come where you're at. God will meet your needs. God will reveal Himself. He's a mighty God. And He knows this, that darkness is the hard time for a man. That's doubts. You see, Jesus said, I'm the light. I'm the light. Men dwell in darkness. Oh, here's struggles. Hey, there's sustenance. It says, and, and, uh, and uh, they came and they destroyed the increase of the earth. He said, uh, till they'll come into Gaza and left no sustenance for Israel, neither sheep nor ox nor ass. Man, they took everything. They devoured it all. Sounds like a family full of boys. <laughs> I used to I used to hate leftovers. I don't even know what leftovers are anymore. <laughs> what happened to them three chickens we roasted? <laughs> 
They ate it all. It's gone. Israel's left with nothing. This is serious business. Everything they hoped for, everything they desired, everything they have planned for. You say, what do you mean they planned? They sowed. If you plant tomato plants, you're expecting some tomatoes. Show you where I'm at. If you plant some okra, you're expecting some okra. It's good fried. It's good stewed, but not everybody likes it like that. Whatever you... They, they've prepared. Listen, sowing is preparing. you just about going to get out of church what you put into it. I've come to find the people that complain the most have the least invested. That got a little amen. I might ought to hit that one again. Those who complain the most in the church house seem to be those who invest the least. Those who are working, man, they're happy to be working. Praise God, I'm working for Jesus. Sweep the floor a little harder. Vacuum the carpet a little more. Bring the man of God a little bit of water. Hey, that worked out real good right there. Mm -mm. Oh, listen, their sustenance, it's it's gone. What they had planned for has fallen through. Why they I believe this, they've sold the flesh. Not only the substance. Sustenance and, and, and sowing, but, but their sorrows. Verse number 5 says, For they came up with their cattle, with their tents, and, and they came as grasshoppers for multitude. For both they and, and their camels were without number, and they entered into a land to destroy it. Israel was greatly impoverished because of the Midianites. And the children of Israel cried unto the Lord. I, I don't know what they cried. Could have been something like this. God, it just ain't fair. Some of you laughing, you said that. God, it ain't fair. I've worked so hard. I've done so much. And look at that ungodly crowd. They are they are flourishing. They've got everything I've ever wanted. Oh, do they? Do they really? You think that worldly, ungodly crowd's got peace in the dark night? You think when death comes, they're going to say, Boy, I sure have enjoyed life. I'm going to tell you what, when the Warren Buffets of this world die, they're going to lift, unless something changes, they're going to lift their lives in hell. The rich man did. And he said, Lord, please send to my brothers. Would you send one and tell them? This is real. I've got some bad news for you. The rich man is still there, preacher. And he'll be there forever. I wonder whose hands his blood is on. Did you get that? Has your neighbor ever heard you tell him about Jesus? Oh, it's easy in the church house. Woo! God's good. But the Midianites are among us. Hey, they're upon us. They're growing stronger and stronger. All oh, the sorrows, the sorrows, their situation. But also, let's look at this ascending, ascending. 
uh, uh, going out to, in verse number 6, it said the children of Israel cried unto the Lord. Verse number 7 says, And it came to pass when the children of Israel cried unto the Lord because of the Midianites. Listen, they're not crying out because of their sins. They're not crying out because wickedness has overwhelmed them. They're crying out because of the situation they found themselves in. God, it's not fair. You know what Gideon's going to do in just a, in just a few short days? Gideon's going to go to the groves. He's going to tear down their idols. By the way, they're at his father's place. He's going to cut down the groves and he's going to tear down the, of the altars. And they're going to come and say, who did that? He did it at night, by the way. Who did that mighty man of valor? He's fearful in the daytime. Yeah, but he got the job done, amen? Him and ten fellows went and tore down the, the, the idol worship places. And man, they said, where's, where's Gideon at? We're going to kill him. And here's what his father said. His father said, it's not Gideon that should die, but it's each of you who worship Baal. And man, there's a real problem here. There's a real problem. The children of Israel are crying out. And it's because of the Midianites. They're not seeing their sin. I'll tell you what, it's easy to see somebody else's sin. Look at that old boy over there. He ain't nothing but a liar. He don't tell the truth to nobody. Yeah, how truthful are you? You say, oh, I don't, but look at, oh, Jim, look at that old boy. He just keeps playing around with his wife. Yeah? Well, are you playing around on your God? Yeah, it'd get quiet. Quiet don't hurt me. I've come to tell you the truth. You know what's going to happen in Israel? I don't know if I'll get any further than this. But you know what's going to happen in Israel? This man Gideon's going to reveal to them the truth of their God. And there's going to be a crowd of men come. By the way, I believe it's about 32,000 of them. And they're going to come and they say, Boy, Gideon, we're with you. And he'll say, Well, if any of you are afraid, go home. 22,000 of them going to leave. And Gideon says, Lord... There's over 120,000 of that crowd of Midianites. 10,000? And you know what Lord said to him? You're right, Gideon. Let's get rid of some of them. <laughs> That's what he said. He said, you take them down that river. And if they, if they stand and dip the water and lap like a dog, he said, I want you to get that kind. That's the kind we need. They'll be alert. They'll be attentive. Don't you get those that get down on their knees and drink out of the creek. 300 men. 300. Gideon said, Lord, how many of them are you going to take from me? Can you imagine facing an army with 300 men? You know why the Lord did that? He told Gideon. He said, he said, if you take that crowd down there, they'll brag about how they defeated them. He said, it's, it's not by their might. It's not by their strength. He said, I'm going to give you the victory. <laughs> I'm going to tell you what. This church is not going to give you victory. This preacher is not going to give you victory. This preacher is not going to give you victory. Victory will come from the Lord and the Lord alone. Listen, if you, if you get the victory over that sin that's so easily besetting you, and we all got them. I don't remember which one of the preachers said it this week, but they said something like this. You can, hey, Lord, you can have, you can have all them sins except this one. I kind of like this one. That'll wake you up. I kind of like this one. I, don't, I believe I'll just hang on this one a little longer.
But you know what Gideon has begun to believe now? He's begun to believe God could really do it. He's gone down into the camp. You remember this? He went down into the camp. And he heard two of the Midianite men saying, I had a dream. And I dreamed there's a cake of barley rolled in here. And it tore up everything. And the other one said, you know what? You know what that dream means? It means this. Gideon's coming and he's going to defeat the Midianites. Old Midian said, Woo! That's what God's been saying. I'm glad God sends preachers. Amen? I will tell you what, a preacher will tell you some things nobody else will ever tell you. Some of you are looking at me like you don't believe that. You remember that preacher named Nathan? He stuck a finger in David's face and he said, Thou art the man. What David? David already said, Man, he ought to be killed. We'll string him up. He's not fit to live. David, thou art the man. Who do you think I've been talking about? This is one of the favorite things Baptists love to say leaving church. Boy, the preacher sure gave it to him today. Is that, isn't that true? Some will even say things like this. Boy, I wish Brother Smith... I, I don't know if you got a Brother Smith here or not. I just... I could say no. I could say Smith. Or, you, you got what I'm saying. I'm not really talking about anybody in particular. I better, I better go ahead and say it before I get like Brother Ray and I forget what I was going to say. I may have already done that. <laughs> Said... Boy, if old Brother Smith had just been here, boy, the preacher to give it to him today. You know what the preacher came to do? He came to level it on you today. God may not have told him who it was. But it is meant for somebody. And I want to say this. Don't, I hope you, hope you won't take this too hard, but it was probably meant for you. This is a book of transition. Man, old Joshua said, Oh, it's for me and my house. What did he say? We'll serve the Lord. And Samuel comes on the scene. He sees an ungodly man as Eli with his two sons, Hophni and Phinehas. And they're destroying the land, committing adultery, stealing, lying. I'll tell you something God hates. God hates a lying preacher. And there's a lot of them today. I make it sound like it never been any except today. That didn't sound right, did it? There's always been lying preachers. First thing they're lying about is they're called to preach. I, I can stand right here and assure you God did not call everybody that's preaching today to preach. For one thing, they don't meet the qualifications of the Word of God. And if they don't meet the qualifications of the Word of God, God did not call them to preach. That's free. to his voice. See, God doesn't always speak in the whirlwind. He doesn't always speak in the might and rushing power. But what you'll often find is that God speaks a still, small right. voice. Israel's doing right. They're crying out to God. Albeit it's the wrong reason. But God has their attention. What will it take for God to get 
thought I was going to say your attention, didn't you? But I'm not going to say your attention. Listen to this. Our attention. Man's depraved. But God gives the cure. Man, was that a message Brother, Brother Ray Robinson preached on it? It's finished the other morning. It is finished. <laughs> Man, he's already accomplished the work. All we must do is believe upon the name of the Lord Jesus. Submit and surrender. And say, yes, Lord, it's me standing in need. Help me, oh God. Would you cry out in measure? Heads bowed and eyes closed. Your pastor's coming. Your musicians, I, I suppose, preacher, do you want to have a time of invitation? We're, we're waiting for the musicians. God knows what your need is tonight. Listen, for Israel to have thought God didn't know exactly where they were at, how foolish. For us to believe God does not know exactly where we're at tonight, how foolish we would be. But God does. Our Father, we thank you for a man of Gideon's desire simply to know that you're God. God, you've empowered me and called upon me for a task to fulfill responsibility. Yes, Lord, it, when I was a child, I, I thought as a child, I spake as a child, I acted as a child. But God, help me to realize that we've become men, adults, and help us to put aside those childish things. Oh, we'd ask in Christ's name. Brother Rick, would you come? Let's stand if you would, please. Let's have an invitation to him tonight. I appreciate the challenge from the Word of God. I appreciate the message, how true it is. Certainly tonight, I think we'd all agree we stand in need of getting the idols and the things out of our life and simply walking closer to the Lord. I just believe tonight the Lord may have spoke to someone. Not be saved, but still you know that there's a need in your life to get some of those things out. But you might better serve the Lord. We can have revival if we'll just answer and do what God tells us to. What page, Brother Rick? 394. Page 394, if you would, please.
truly hope and pray that you have surrendered all to him. But I doubt very seriously that every one of us in this building has totally and completely surrendered everything to him. It's easy to go through the motions. Easy to say we are. But you see, God knows our heart. Doesn't make any difference what anybody else thinks or what everybody else knows. But God knows our hearts. Let's bow our heads for a moment before we dismiss. I'm wondering tonight if there's one here that, or several or that would raise their hand tonight and say, Preacher, I know I'm saved. And I realize tonight that I need to surrender everything I've got, all my problems, all my difficulties, all my situations, everything that I'm going through and all my burdens. I need to surrender them unto the Lord and leave them with Him. There's things in my life that I need prayer about. Would you pray for me, preacher, and remember me in prayer? We're not going to point you out and come to you. God bless you. Raise your hand. God bless you and you. Just raise your hand. God sees them. I may not see them, but God sees them. And that's what matters. Hands up over the building. God bless you. We're going to pray for you tonight. We're going to pray God will help you. Thank you so much. God bless you. Those that raised your hand, thank you for being honest. We're going to be dismissed with a word of prayer. Don't forget tomorrow night, Dr. Richard Hughes will be with us. He'll be uh, speaking tomorrow night. And also uh, Friday night, the Morning Star Trio will be with us tomorrow night. Also, Brother Mike Boone is supposed to be back tomorrow night. So uh, we're Expecting a good time tomorrow night. You just pray. Try to call somebody. we got some church members that haven't been one night to revival. Preacher can't do nothing about that. Members can't do nothing about that. But we need to pray for them. Call them. Tell them we miss them. Maybe they'll come tomorrow night. Let's be dismissed in a word of prayer. And you be careful going home. You pray for Brother John and his family. they got to go over yonder tonight when they go back home. And over... <laughs> All right, you pray for Brother John, and they're going to Hillsboro. And uh, so pray for the ministry and the work there, okay? All right, let's be dismissed in a word of prayer. Yeah, I meant to mention that. Justin Cooper. Yeah, next week. Morning Star Trio. I mean, Morning Star Baptist Church. Morning Star Trio will be here tomorrow night, but Tuesday night. That's down at Packlet, Brother Andrew Kerrigan's church. And uh, well, Brother Andrew hugged, hugged my neck the other day. He said, you got a friend, brother. I said, glory to God. I got one beside Jesus. <laughs> Amen. So uh, appreciate Brother Andrew. So that's so Tuesday night. We'll try to go down. Anybody wants to go. And if you don't want to go, we'll go anyway. But uh, 7 o'clock. And so we leave here probably about 6.15, 6.30. Uh, it's on a Tuesday night. So be much in prayer for the revival at Brother Andrew Kerrigan's church. Amen? All right. Pray for Brother John and they'll be there Tuesday night Sunday. Let's be dismissed with a word of prayer. Thank you for coming tonight. Appreciate our visitors being with us. Thank you for being here and being a part of the service. We just enjoy having you so much. Every head bowed and every eye closed. Brother uh, Jack Stevens, would you dismiss us?